So thank you very much for tuning in. This session is looking at the role of centralization versus decentralization versus distribution when it comes to the network structures within the Web3 discussion. So the question really has to be asked is, why decentralize when you can centralize? What are the pros and the cons of the different ways in which data and systems are organized? One of the reasons why we are looking at this topic is actually because huge amounts of growth opportunities have emerged across the Web3 space, specifically native to distributed or decentralized structures. And the majority of Web3 development is very much linked to decentralized rather than centralized systems. And so it's important for us to look at the benefits, but some of the risks associated with this. One of the important points from the outset is that in general, centralized systems have a safeguard of regulation. This is not entirely fundamentally the case in every context, but broadly speaking, a form of regulatory protection tends to align itself with centralized systems. We will see some examples of that in a moment. But the technologies within the decentralized ecosystem of Web3 are developing very quickly and are growing and have a lot of potential. And so there's a real meeting of minds when we consider how centralized structures are being rewritten and transformed as interest in and development of blockchain and Web3 systems continues to evolve. So it might help to begin with understanding what we mean by centralized systems and considering an historical overview of how these systems have controlled and governed societies for many years. But just to get a sense of what we mean by the system or the network, a definition might be that a network is a group of perhaps two or more computer systems that are connected and they share files or other resources through this connectivity. So a centralized network is one where the nodes of information don't directly communicate with one another. In fact, this system is governed by a single server, which handles the majority of the processes and the information flow. Here, all the resources would be in the custody of the centralized server and access to these resources must go via that central system. Now, let us think about some of the advantages of a centralized network. The sharing or the movement of data is often very efficient because it is situated in this single location. If any alterations need to be made to the system, they are directly applied to that one single source. So if we think about some of the disadvantages of a centralized system, it goes without saying that a single point of information is also a single point of failure. So if for any reason that source fails, then the entire ecosystem shuts down. As a result, this creates additional security risks for that one single location. And finally, the future scalability potential of that single server location is reasonably limited. In contrast to a centralized system, a decentralized network apportions the workload across a variety of different servers, and each of these can act as an independent server. The advantages of a decentralized system, so there is no single point of failure risk for a decentralized network, given that the resources are spread across the various servers that participate within the network. As such, no single server is in position of all the information. This enables a greater potential future scalability of decentralized systems and has the potential to increase the privacy associated with the information moving across the different servers. Some of the disadvantages often associated with decentralized networks is that the performance of the network may be affected by the number of servers that are participating in the network. On top of this, it is possible for data to potentially be lost as it migrates across the network. And the costs associated with administering multiple servers are usually greater than the centralized systems. And the final system that we're going to be looking at today is a distributed network system. So in this system, the processing power for transactions 
and movement of information is actually spread broadly across the network. Within distributed network systems, processing power can be spread evenly across all the participating nodes. And in this way, participating nodes that are distributed together constitute the distributed network system. What are the advantages of a distributed network system? It has no single point of failure as the information is being processed across all the individual nodes. As such, this affords greater efficiencies in the future potential scalability of the system. And with this arrives potentially a greater sense of security. But what are the potential disadvantages of a distributed network? With all the different nodes, this can make it more difficult to maintain. And as with the decentralized system, data can be lost as it migrates or moves from one location to another. So from this, you might be thinking, well, what is the difference between a distributed system and a decentralized system? In a distributed ledger, the workload of transactions is split up. Whereas in a decentralized system, each of these nodes can act as a master server in and of themselves and as a single processing point. So now that we've considered the differences and some commonalities across the three different systems, it's important to consider how they apply to the development of Web3 and blockchain systems going forward. Bitcoin's blockchain protocol is a decentralized system for exchanging digital liquidity, digital cash, digital currency, but it's also an example of a distributed ledger technology. So an example here would be that Bitcoin's blockchain protocol is both a decentralized system for exchanging digital currency and also functions as a distributed ledger technology. How this applies within Web3 is really important because Control or power within a centralized system is exerted by one single source. Within a decentralized system, there isn't the same single source of control. And in fact, it is equally shared across all participants in the network. This directly relates to Bitcoin, for example, which is a blockchain system that is unable to be altered by any single entity. So therefore, it is a decentralized system. But equally, the distributed nature of blockchain is seen in its administration of a peer-to-peer -peer network of computers spread across the globe. Decentralized or distributed systems offer the promise of a destabilization of traditional power hierarchies, a greater equality across the participants within networks. This recalibration of a form of status quo is often accompanied by an ideological motivation and a greater sense of community empowerment. Community is vitally important within the Web3 space, and this decentralization is one of the most potent ways of fostering it. As such, decentralized autonomous organizations, or DAOs, offer a greater sense of community empowerment as each of the members of the DAO obtains voting rights over current and future decisions. With this in mind, however, I think it's important to consider some of the historical impediments to mass adoption of these systems. For instance, centralized systems can offer consumers or participants a greater level of protection. If you take the, the example of rules of law that govern societies spread around the globe, these offer forms of protection that sometimes may not be achievable within a decentralized or distributed structure. Who might you turn to if your NFT is stolen within a reasonably unregulated ecosystem? Should equal weighting be afforded to all voices within distributed social structures? And what potential risks might be associated with this? On top of this, if those with the most tokens assume greater voting powers within proof-of-stake systems, is this also risking the centralization of power? Fundamentally, we are at a moment where these forms of power systems and power structures are being considered and implemented, and our traditional understanding of the structures of power are being redefined. It is precisely here that Web3 is offering new, novel, and innovative ways to 
develop community identity, community understanding and engagement. And for this reason, holds such an intriguing and dynamic future potential.